Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our New Testament survey, BC 103. So today, uh, would, uh, we would be covering on the last book, the book of Revelation. So we may take an extra few minutes to complete the book so that this today will be our last class after which we can uh, you know prepare for a final assessment so even before we could begin with our session can i request one of y'all to please start the session with a word of prayer thank you jesus for this day thank you lord for this time that we have uh, together to come together to know your word um to know um what you have spoken through um your um disciple john and uh thank you jesus i pray that you open our mind to understanding and that um do you learn something today lord jesus thank you father god for helping pastor dana to um share what she has uh, she has to teach us and Thank you, Lord, for everything in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rin. Thank you. Let me share the presentation. Okay. And also, let's all of us turn to Book of Revelations. So what do we know about the Book of Revelations? Share your thoughts on whatever you know about the Book of Revelations. It was written by... John, one of Jesus' close disciples. Okay, it's written by John, the closest disciple. Okay, what are the other things that we know about the book of Revelation? It's about the vision. Yes, it is. Okay, it's a book of prophetic. Okay. Yeah, the futuristic things, what's going to happen. Yes. Yes, as all, uh, you know, yeah, whatever you guys shared, it's right. So the revelation, this book is also known as the book of last things. The book of last things. Revelation is also known as the book of last things. The author of this book, who is the author of this book? Okay, can you all see? The slide changed. Yes, the side. Okay, the John. Which John is this? The James and John, son of Zebedee, the twelve disciples of Jesus. So this is the John who's writing, who received this revelation from Jesus Himself. Okay. Then what are the other details that we know about this book? How many chapters are there in this book? 22 chapters the first three chapters chapter one two and three talks about looking back it talks about the history okay it gives the things which we have seen and it talks about the personal biographical and the things which are like christ's letters to the seven churches it addresses on that then chapter four to chapter 22 it is the book of prophecy the things that are to, uh, to look ahead, okay? So it talks about things which will take place in future, like Christ as a judge. Chapter 4 to 5 talks about Christ as a judge. Wait, let me know. These are the outline, okay? So it talks about chapter 1, talk, gives us an introduction to this book. Chapter 2 gives us a message to seven churches. And chapter 4 talks about the seven seals to be revealed. And chapter 8 talks about the trumpets to warn. And chapter 12, it talks about the spiritual warfare that's going to take place. And 14 to 18 talks about the bowls of judgment and Babylon. 
and 19 and 20 talks about the victory of the king of kings and chapter 20 to, uh, till 22 talks about the final judgment and the heaven and in 22 it concludes with a hope that is the faithfulness of revelation so yes it addresses uh, the book of revelation also addresses on the great tribulation the coming of christ the millennial and the eternal state so what are the other details that we know about this book other than the author of this book Okay, let's look into the detail of this book. So John was in exile on the island of Patmos when he received the vision of Revelation from Jesus himself. He was on the island of Patmos. Can we turn to Revelation chapter 1 verse 9? Request one of you all to please read. Chapter 1 verse 9. First John chapter one is the book of Revelation, chapter one, verse nine. I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Thank you. So what we see here, John was in exile on the island of Patmos when he received this vision. So even the tradition, the early church fathers also confirmed that John was on exile on the island of Patmos during the reign of the Roman Emperor Domitian around 81 to 96 AD. And Patmos seemed to be a very small island. It is a coastal place in Asia Minor in Aegean Sea. So it is about 60 miles southwest of east. And it is a very small, barren, um, mountainous island, only 6 miles wide and 10 miles long. So the date period when this book was written, it was in 98 AD. So how did this book was named as Revelation? Well, why do you think this book was named as Revelation? Why not uh, Fourth John? John 1, 2, 3 is there. Why can't the book of Revelation also be named as Fourth John? Why was this book named as Revelations? Because this book contains the revelation that was given to Apostle John. That's one of the reasons why this letter or this book is named as Revelations. Because this book contains the revelations that John received in a vision from Jesus himself. Um, that's one of the reasons. And... and Okay, and it also gives us the end times, a uh, clear picture of the end times, events that would uh, uh, unveil itself in, in the right time. So the book of Revelation, we see Jesus Christ himself in this book. Can I request, so when we read, I'm not too sure like we can get into each and every scripture due to the time, but I'll just give you all the reference where you can refer later so when we read revelation chapter 1 verse 9 of which rin just read and another scripture revelation 3 22 he who has an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the church so we see the greatest or the great high priest ministering among the churches we see that jesus himself presenting himself as the head of the church and also in Revelation 4, chapter 1. Can I request one of you all to please read? 4, verse 1. Chapter 4, verse 1. 
After these things, I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet, speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. Thank you. So as we read through, read through uh, this verse, we see that the Lamb of God, that is Jesus Christ, who provided for us the salvation, he says he is the only person who is worthy to open the seal. And he is the only one who could offer up incense of his people at the presence of God. Later part in, uh, in chapter 17, we also see that Jesus has been addressed as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords who will conquer over everything. Everything is subject under him. And in Revelation 21, we see that Jesus has been presented as the bridegroom who's ready to receive his bride. So Jesus Christ, in the book of Revelation, he's seen as the great high priest. He is seen as the Lamb of God. He is seen as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he's also seen as the bridegroom. There are four revelation of Jesus has been revealed in this book. We also see the very purpose of this book is John makes it very clear while he is writing that the main purpose of this book is to bring the revelation of who Jesus Christ himself in this book, that he is the King of Kings, he is the Lord of Lords, he is the great high priest, he is the conqueror, everything on this earth is subject to him and he is the deliverer, he will come back again, he will rule over this earth, we will have a new heaven, new earth, the new Jerusalem and he will be the ruler over this earth and he is also revealing to us that you know everything is subject to Jesus everything is in his control with that the book of Revelation also compares it from the very first book Revelation being the last book of the New Testament has been compared with the first book that is Genesis of Old Testament let, let's look into that let me change the slide okay As the book of Revelation is a book of symbols that can only be interpreted by the rest of the biblical record. So as we look at it, we need to understand the book of Revelation is a, something very uh, critical. But at the same time, it is understandable. God is a God who will reveal it to his children. So here, as we study the book of Revelation, we need to first study the whole scripture the whole Bible for us to understand the book of Revelation. So the book of Revelation, yes, it is very unique in its nature because of the revelation and the prophecies and signs and symbols and numbers we need to understand. So as we prepare ourselves, okay, um, maybe in your uh, third year we will be... Uh, yeah, I think in second year, you will have the whole book called Eschatology, okay? Study on the book of Revelation where we will be covering verse by verse, chapter by chapter. So right now, we are just doing a survey to give you, give you an overall view of this book. So as we try to understand, let's see how this book of Revelation is compared to the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis is a seed plot of the Bible and the book of Revelation represents the whole fruit that is the full fruit that was in the seed and now we can see the comparison so in the book of Genesis we see the first heaven and earth was created by God himself by his word and in the book of Revelation, it talks about the new heaven and the new earth which will come. And in Genesis, we see the sun and moon were created. And in the book of Revelation, it talks about you don't need a sun and a moon because you have Jesus Christ who is the light of the world in the midst of us. So he will be the light for us. We don't need a sun 
and the moon. In Genesis, it talks about the first Adam and his bride. And in Revelation, it talks about the last Adam, that is Jesus himself, who will be the bride for us. And then we see in Genesis, a river passes through the Garden of Eden. And in Revelation, it talks about a river proceeds from the throne of God, that is the living water, who is Jesus himself. Genesis talks about Satan makes his first appearance and in revelation it talks about satan makes his final exit he's been judged he's been sent back to the place where he belongs to there's no more satan in that new heaven and in the new earth then in genesis we see satan overcomes the first adam and in the book of revelation it talks about Jesus overcoming. He crushes the Satan and he overcomes Satan. In Genesis, talks about the paradise which has been defiled by sin. And in Revelation, we see that defilement has been banned from the paradise of God. So we will experience a true paradise which God had created in the beginning for man. In Genesis, we see the curse of sin was imposed on all mankind. And in the book of Revelation, we see the curse of sin has been lifted up from mankind. So there is no more curse. Because there is no more curse, there's no more death, no more tears, no more sorrow, no more sadness. So in the book of Genesis, death, the beginning of death, the death was begun. And in the Revelation, because there's no sorrow, no sin, no tears, there's end to death. Man will not die anymore. Yeah. Then uh, in the book of Genesis, we see redemption has been promised. In, in the book of Revelation, we see redemption is completed. Man was driven from paradise in the book of Genesis. In the book of Revelation, we see the same man has been restored back to paradise. He will live with the bride forever. In the book of Genesis, we see the man denied the access to the tree of life. But then in the book of Revelation, it reveals about how the man has been restored back to access the tree of life. So the book of Revelation is the capstone to the rest of the Bible that we can understand. So the eternal purpose of God is declared in the first two chapters of Genesis. And that's what we see the same eternal purpose of God is completed in the last two chapters of Revelation. That which was begun in the Genesis as a complete ending in the book of Revelation. So as we discussed uh, between God's plan, what was God's plan at the beginning of the earth in the book of Genesis? We see the complete or fulfillment of his plan at the revelation. So as we discussed on that, let's move on to the distinct features of this book. So the book of Revelation tops the list of number of things. Um, it has many allusions to uh, of direct references from the Old Testament so that we may understand. And this is much higher than the closest book of Hebrews. So we all said like Hebrews has the highest number of references from the Old Testament. But then when we study the book of Revelation, we understand that the book of Revelation has much more reference to the Old Testament than the book of Hebrews. So the book, the book of Revelation has, um, you know, uh, as the contains the book of symbols and numbers, which needs to be interpreted. Um, let's look at what are the numbers and the symbols that has been present in the book of Revelation, which will be interpreted and explained as we study in detail in the class on eschatology. Okay, so here we see in this book, we see in chapter one, it discusses about the seven churches, seven lampstand, seven stars and seven stars. And in chapter four, it talks about the seven spirits, 
chapter 5 reveals on seven seals chapter 8 talks about seven trumpets chapter 10 talks about seven thunders then in chapter 12 it talks about seven heads and seven diadems chapter 15 talks about seven angels seven uh, bowls bowls and uh, sorry seven mountains in chapter 17 so in addition the book of revelation invokes seven blessings on the people of god so what is the seven blessing that we see in the book of revelation As the Gospel of Matthew talks about the Beatitude of Jesus in chapter 5, in the New Testament, it closes the Beatitudes of Jesus issues from heaven. Let me share that slide. Give me a minute. Yes. These are the seven blessings that has been revealed in the book of Revelation. Can I request you all to turn to Revelation chapter 1, verse 3? Another person turn to chapter 14, verse 13. Next is chapter 16, verse 15. Each one, keep each scripture verses ready as per the screen, what you'll see. Even from online, you all can also turn to chapter 19, verse 9, chapter 20, verse 6, chapter 22, verse 7, and chapter 22, verse 14. Revelation chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. Amen. So what we see here, blessed are those who read and keep the words of this prophecy. The next blessing, yes. 14, 13. Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Write this, blessed, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor, for their deeds will follow them. Amen. So we see here, blessed are those who die in the Lord. It's blessed for the saints to die in the Lord. And then from then on, their works will speak. Okay, the next. Revelation 16, verse 15. Behold, I am coming as a thief. Blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Amen. Thank you. So the third blessing is blessed are those who watch and keep themselves pure. Fourth blessing. Then he said to me, Right blessed are those who are called to the marriage suffer of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true saying of God. Thank you. So it talks about the bridegroom. Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. So it is one of the blessings that we have in the book of Revelation. Yes, Kennedy, would you like to read? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, Revelation yeah. chapter 20, verse 6. Happy and greatly blessed are those who are included in this first raising of the dead. The second death has no power over them. They shall be priests of God and of Christ, and they will rule with him for a thousand years. Thank you, Sean. So blessed are those who have a part in the first resurrection of god can i request one of you all to read the sixth blessing 22 verse 7 behold i am coming soon blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy in this book blessed are those who keep the words of this prophecy the last blessing can i request you all to read Revelation 22, 14. Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right and right to the tree to life and may enter the, through that gates into the city. Thank you. So it says, blessed are those who do his commands. That is, in obedience, you will have the access to the tree of life. 
with that we will move on to the revelation which gives a report to the seven churches of asia can i request you all to please turn to chapter 2 revelations chapter 2 chapter 2 verse 1 to 7 can i request one of you all to read Revelation chapter 2, verse 1. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says, He who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands, I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not and have found them ears. And you have preserved and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works or else I found I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. But these you have that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is, which is in the midst of a paradise of God. Thank you. So what we see, the seven churches were located, the seven churches that we read in chapter 1, verse 11, talks about the church at Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. These are the seven churches that were located at the major Roman road. So if a person is, uh, uh, I mean, taking this letter and starting from the church at Ephesus, when he travels, it is in the same order that he would visit the church. So in the, as the churches have been located in that a major Asia Minor, in the same way it has been listed here. So what does it say? It talks about positive, talks about negative, it also gives a response in demand. It's demanding a response and then rewards to those who overcome. So when we read chapter 2, verse 1 to 7, we see what is the positive in this scripture verse. Sorry? Okay, they uh, heard, they, had, they, they followed the teaching of God. So there was a good doctrine. And what does it say? They were hardworking. Yes. They were morally pure. So there are good things about this church, the positive. So there are three positive. That is, they were hardworking. They were morally good, pure. Third, they, ha they had a good doctrine, sound doctrine. So what is the negative thing about this church? What is the negative thing? They left their first love. Verse 4 talks about how they have forsaken the first love. Then what is the response that we can demand from this church? What is the response that has been demanded from this church? Remember, repent. And do as you once did. Get back to that first love. Remember and do what you once did. And what is the reward? If they follow that, what is their reward? Yes, verse 7 says that you will have the reward to eat from the tree of life. That you will be the partaker in Christ himself, who is the tree of life. So let's move on to the next church, church at Smyrna. Can I request one of you all to please turn to 
chapter 2 verse 8 to 11 Anyone, even from the online, anyone can read. Revelation chapter 2 verses 8 to 11. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things says the first and the last who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulation and poverty. But you are rich and I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful until death and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jekin. So what is the positive about this church? What is the positive about this church? Sorry? That spiritually they are rich. And also we see in verse 10, they're suffering for their faith. They are suffering for their faith. So, there's anything negative that we are able to find? There's no negative in this church. There's no negative. So, what is the response that we uh, that has been expected from this church? To be faithful unto death. Verse ten. It says, be faithful until death. And what is the reward? That I will give you the crown of life. So if this church do not have any negative, the positive is they are spiritually rich and they are suffering for their faith. And if you hold on to this, if you are faithful to this unto death, you will have the reward. That is the crown of life. With that, we will move on to the next church, church at Pergamon. Request all to please turn to chapter 2, verse 12 to 17. It's called as uh, Pergamos. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things says he who has a sharp two-edged sword. I know your works and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. And you hold fast to my name and did not deny my faith, even in the days in which Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was killed among you, where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you, because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit sexual immorality. Thus you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I will give him a white stone, and on a stone a new name written which no one knows except him who receives it. Thank you, Rin. So what we see here, what is the positive about this church? We see in verse 13 that they were faithful martyrs who were killed among you. So they were faithful during persecution. What is the negative of this church? Verse 14, when we read that, we see that they lived a life of compromise. They were indulgent in the lifestyle. They lived a life of compromise. Then. What is the response that has been expected from this church? Verse 16, what does it say? Repent. Repent from what you are doing. When you repent, I am a God who will forgive. And when you repent genuinely, verse 17 says, there is a white stone with a new name on it. 
it says that and i will give him a white stone and on that stone a new name will be written which no one knows except him who receives it so every act of obedience when we turn to god with a genuine heart with a repented heart there is a reward that we will receive yes with that we will move on to the next church thyatira request you all to please turn to chapter 2 verse 18 to 29 Chapter two, verse eighteen to twenty-nine. To the angel of the church in Thyatira, write: the, uh, These are the words of the Son of God, whose eyes are like blazing fire, and whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your deeds, your love and faith, your service and perseverance, and the, that you are now doing more than you did at first. Nevertheless. I have this against you you tolerate the that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophet by her teaching she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols I have given her time to repent of her immorality but she is unwilling so I will cast her on a bed of suffering and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely unless they repent of her ways i will strike her children dead then all the churches will know that i am he who searches hearts and minds and i will repay each of you according to your deeds now i say to the rest of you in thyatira to you who do not hold to her teaching and have not learned satan's so called deep secrets i will not impose any other burden on you except to hold on to what you have until i come to the one who is victorious and does my will to to the end i will give authority over the nations that one will rule them with an iron scepter and will dash them uh, to pieces like pottery just as i have received authority from my father i will also give them give that one the morning star whoever has ears let them hear what the spirit says to the churches thank you so we see that this church thyatira was corrupt church but then what was the positive in this church what are the positive things in this church verse 19 says i know your works of love service in faith patience and for your work that lasts are more than the first they had good works in nature at the same time they had something negative so what is negative in this church what are the few things that is against this church we see there's immorality teaching of jezebel there's uh, wrong teaching heresy in this church we we see that you know who uh, i have few things against you because you allow that women jezebel who calls herself a prophet is to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eating things sacrificed to idols and what is the response that is demanded from this church verse 21 it says i've given her the time to repent for sexual sexual immorality and she did not repent so we see that repent and hold fast that which you have to the end so when they repent some may repent again they may fall back but then the response that has been required from this church is repent and hold on to it do not fall back what is the reward we see that if the reward is 
power over the nations and the morning star power over the nations and i will give him the morning star so let's turn let's move on to the next church that is sardis chapter 3 verse 1 to 6 revelation chapter 3 1 to 6 and to the angel of the church in sardis write these things says he who has the seven spirits of god and the seven stars i know your works that you have a name that you are alive but you are dead be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die for i have not found your works perfect before god remember therefore how you have received and heard hold fast and repent therefore if you will not watch i will come upon you as a thief and you will not know what hour i will come upon you you have a few names even as in sardis who have not defiled their garments and they shall walk with me in white for they are worthy he who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments and i will not blot out his name from the book of life but i will confess his name before my father and before his angels he who has an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the churches amen thank you so what we see is the church at sardis was a dead church but then what was the positive in this church was there anything positive in this church what does it say yes there are some who are doing well okay some it says that you may have a name that you are alive but you are dead but i know your works so there are some who are faithful but not everyone as is there anything uh, negative in this church verse 1 itself it says but you are dead they are unfaithful they have a defiled garments what is the response that has been demanded from this church yeah verse 3 says remember to hold fast and repent and be watchful of what you are doing so that you may not sin again and then what is the reward if they repent and they are watchful what is the reward verse 5 and 6 we see that he who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments and then named before the angels so but i will confess his name before my father and before his angels so there is a new name that will be given and it will be named before the father and before the angels okay let's look into the last church that is philadelphia chapter 3 verse 7 to 13 can i request one of you all to please read and to the angel of the church in philadelphia right these things says he who is holy he who is true he who has the key the key of david he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens i know your works see i have set before you an open door and no one can shut it for you have a little strength have kept my word and have not they need my name indeed i will make those of the uh, synagogue of satan who say they are jews and are not but lie indeed i will make them come and worship before your feet and and to you to know that i have loved you because you have kept my command to preserve i also will keep you from the hour of trial 
which shall come upon the whole world to teach those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my name, my new name, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. So this church, church at, church at Philadelphia is known to be as the faithful church. So what are the positive response about this church? What is positive about this church? Yes, that they are faithful. They have been faithful. Okay. So what is the negative? There is no negative been listed in this church. So what is the response that has been expected from this church? What is the response? To preserve and keep. What is it? Keep doing what you're doing. Verse 11. Behold, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast what you have that no one may take your crown. So hold fast to what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. Persevere in whatever you are doing. And then what is the reward? What is the reward? That I have kept you from the trial. And verse 12 says, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him a name of my God, and the name of the city of my God. That is, he'll get a new name. That's, see, the last end of that scripture. Uh, and the new, uh, city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. That would be the reward. And if you see even the other churches, when he addressed to Pergamos, and also when the other churches like Sardis, he says that, when you repent and follow me, I will give you a new name. So this is what he's been writing and addressing all seven churches so that, you know, they should take a note, be watchful, repent and be watchful and correct themselves so that when they repent, they will have a reward. So the book of Revelation is also known as the book of worship. So when we read Revelations 9.20, can I request you all to please turn to, okay, not 9.20, turn to 11 verse 1. We covered all the churches, no, right? Only six. Sorry? Six I covered, is it? Which one did I leave? Oh, yes, Ladosia. Sorry. Thank you so much. Sorry, 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 everyone. Uh, chapter 3, verse 14 to 22. Thank you, Chira, for letting me know. So when we came across the faithful church, I thought I've completed and I moved on to the next point. Sorry. Yeah, chapter 3, verse 14 to 22. Oh. To the angel of the church in Lodosia, write, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you are either one of the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. You say I am rich, I have acquired wealth and do not need a thing, but you do not but you do not uh, realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. 
i can i i can can counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so you can see those whom i love i rebuke and discipline so be earnest and repent here i am i stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door i will come in and eat with him and he with me to him who overcomes i will give right to sit with me on the, on my throne just as i overcame overcame and sat down with my father on his throne he who has an ear let him hear what the spirit says to the churches amen thank you prince so what we see the church at lodosia we see it is a very lukewarm church is there any positive in nature in this church anything positive about this church i don't think there is anything positive in this church right so what is the negative in this church somebody online okay yes yes shon there is no positive so what is the negative about this church verse 16 please tell me they were lukewarm 17 says they were pride spiritual nakedness they were spiritual nakedness so what is expected the response that has been expected from this church be zealous and repent and then what is the reward that will be given if they be zealous and if they repent what is the reward for this church yes where do we see that in verse 21 we see that to him who overcomes i will grant to sit with me on my throne and i also overcame and as i sat down with my father on his throne so this is the highest position that one could have when we repent and turn toward christ we have been seated in the most highest position that has been given to his son father who gave to his son jesus when we believe in jesus when we repent and turn be zealous and repent we will be seated on the throne along with jesus this is the highest position that we could get that the sonship has been restored back so yeah with that we will move on to the next so the book of revelation and we will go ahead and study more in detail about all the seven churches in detail when we study the book on eschatology in your second year for now we will move on to the next point what this book of revelation is so the book of revelation is also known as the book of worship can i request one of you all to turn to revelations chapter 11 verse 1 So as we study as we know that the book of revelation is also the book of worship we see that we are to worship god not any anything else just god and not worship the beast and god is interested in measuring the worshipers so that's why in the book of revelation in many scriptures is been revealing how the worship should be so can i request you all if you all have turned to um chapter 11 verse 1 please read revelation chapter 11 verse 1 i was given a reed like measuring rod and was told go and measure the temple of god in the altar and count the worshipers there yes 
Then I was given a reed with a measuring rod, and the angel stood saying, Arise and measure the temple of God, the altar, and those who worship there. You see, people are there to worship God. Can I request all to turn to Revelations chapter 1, verse 17? Another person to turn to Revelations chapter 5, verse 11 to 13. Another person turned to Revelations chapter 22, verse 3 to 5, and then 9. I'll put all these scriptures. Just give me one minute, please. In the meanwhile, you all turn. I'll just put all these scriptures. Sorry, I'm not able to access the notepad. I'm not able to access the chat. I'll repeat the scriptures. Revelation chapter 1, verse 17. Make a note, please. Revelation chapter 5, verse 11 to 13. Revelation chapter 5, verse 11 to 13. Revelation chapter 14, verse 4. Revelations chapter 22, verse 3 to 5, and then verse 9. Okay, so you all can take turn and read. Okay, so let's read Revelation chapter 1, verse 17. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. So what we see here, John the Apostle worshipped at the feet of Jesus. And he says, I fell at his feet as dead. When he looked at Jesus, John says, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. So what we see, John prostrated himself in front of Jesus and worshipped him. It is a form of worship. Even in the Old Testament, you see, when people encountered the angels, they prostrated themselves, they fell down and worshipped. So this is one form of worship. So we see John worshipping Jesus by prostrating himself in front of God, in front of Jesus. So next one, Revelation chapter 5, verse 11 to 13. Revelation chapter 5, verse 11 to 13. Then I looked and I hear the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom, and strengthen and honor and glory and blessings. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I hear saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the twenty-four elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. Amen. So we see different forms of worship here. What are the different forms? We see that the angels of heaven worship at the throne. Who else worship from the scripture? Verse 12. What do we see? The living creatures worship the lamb next and the 24 elders worshipped the lord can one of y'all uh sean yes you can turn to chapter 14 verse 4 
we also yes. see before we go the last point i would like to cover verse 13 it says every creature in heaven and on earth worship the lord so with that we will turn to chapter 14 verse 4 yes revelation chapter 14 verse 4 they are the men who have kept themselves pure by not having sexual relations with women they are virgins they follow the lamb wherever he goes they have been redeemed from the rest of mankind and are the first ones to be offered to god and to the lamb and verse five they have never been known to tell lies they are faultless thank you thank you so what we see is all the living creatures and all the nations shall come before him and worship the Lord. The next verse, can I request you all to read Revelation 22 verse 9? Revelation uh, chapter 22 verse 9, but he said to me, don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your fellow prophets and with all who keep the words of this scroll. Worship God. Thank you. So we see that we are all exhorted to worship God. So we see that the book of Revelation gives the importance of worshippers. We need to worship God with reverence. The book of Revelation also leaves with a great hope. Can I request you all to turn to Revelations 22, verse 3 to 5? And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night there. They need no lamp, nor light of the sun, for the Lord gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Okay, just give me a minute. Uh, the slide went off. Okay, I'll just give me a minute, please. Okay, I'm just sharing the slide. Okay, it's working now. Thank you. Thank you. My system was just hanging for some time. Okay. So now we are able to see the change slide, even for the online. Okay. The book of Revelation, as it talks about the worship and the worshippers. Now, the book of Revelation also leaves us with a great hope in Revelation chapter 22. We just read verse 3 to 5. It talks about what does this passage talk about? What is a great hope that we receive from this scripture portion of verse 3 to 5? Tell me, there's sinlessness. We have been left with perfect sinless. We learn that from this passage that we will have the perfect sinless because there shall be no more curse. And what is the second point? We will have a perfect government. 
perfect government because the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it. So if it's the throne of God and the Christ himself is present, there will be a perfect order. There will be a perfect government. Third point, what do we see? His servants shall serve him. So there would be a perfect service because the art, the art attitude, everything will be aligned as per the nature of God. Then what, what, what is the next point we see that? They shall see his face. So there'll be a perfect vision. We all can see the face of the Most High God. Jesus, where we will have a perfect vision to see him face to face. The next one. His name shall be on their forehead. We'll have a perfect image of God in the way that we were created. What is the next point we see? The Lord, God gives them light. He is the perfect illuminator. Is a perfect illumination. Next. What is the next? And they shall reign forever and ever. So there is perfect hereafter. Because we are reigning with Christ. And we are living forever and ever. So most of these points. Whatever I shared about the book of Revelation. I'll just share it. I've taken this from the uh, book called. Explore the book by the author J.S. Baxter. So I would recommend this book for you all to read because there's so much to read, to learn and understand. There's very little that I could cover as a survey of this book, but there's so much revelation been there. So I would recommend you all to please, you know, uh, see how you all can get this book if it's available online or if it's there in our library, please take and read and understand the book of Revelation. The book is called as Explore the Book. Explore the Book by J.S. Baxter, B-A-X-T-E-R. Let me see if I can access the chat. Yes, now it's working. Okay, I've just typed the book name and the author. So yes, usually when people mention about the book of Revelation, they immediately think about judgment, right? So there's no doubt about it. Yes, this book reveals about the last days, judgment, many prophecies that would be unfolded and judgment that has been occurred and uh, yeah, many other things that this book talks about. It talks about the seven churches that we went through, what were the good the negative, and what was the response that has been expected when they obey? When they obey, what is the reward that they will inherit? And this book also talks about the paradise. The paradise, a new heaven and new earth, how Jesus himself we will be the judge, will be in midst of us that we don't need the sun and the moon because he is the light with us. As this book reveals that Jesus is the light, Jesus would be the life of tree, the tree of life. Jesus will also be the living water from where the living water runs from the throne to us. The book of Revelation also promises one thing. As we are here studying this book, each of us are going through different situation and different circumstances. Some can be changed, some are helpless. No matter what condition that we may be in, but the Revelation 22 gives us this great hope. Great hope that Jesus is our Savior. Great hope that Jesus is sinless. Jesus is our head. Jesus will redeem us. He is the perfect image. We have a life eternal with him. This is the greatest hope that this book 
reveals it and gives it to us. Actually, the book of Revelation, in fact, gives us a promise that we will get into a world that is the new Jerusalem way. There will be no more tears, no more pain. The situation that we are put in will not be there the day that when we will be with the Lord. The death will pass away. We will have an eternal body. We will have, there will be no more tears, no more sorrow. There would be joy in the presence of Lord. And it also reminds us that there is a hope beyond what we are going through today. So hold on to that great hope. Even when we covered the Gospels, even when we covered the epistles of Apostle Paul, even as we studied through uh, the letter of Apostle Peter, James, John, Jude, everyone encouraged the believers when they were enduring the persecution. They encouraged them to endure the persecution by setting a focus on Jesus himself. Hold on to him, for our reward is great. Even when we studied the seven churches, yes, it is asking them to take a look at your life so that you may know where you are, know the condition that you are in. At the same time, it does not just only point out the negative, but it also points out the positive. And it also encourages, the book of Revelation encourages the churches, the believers today, even us, you and me, repent, be watchful, hold on to that promise that we have from God, that he will redeem us, he is our redeemer, that we will be with him together, and that those days will be peaceful. There will be no more sorrow, no more pain, no more struggle of this life. That one day where all this darkness will pass away and we will dwell in that perfect light where Jesus himself will be that perfect light. A world with solution, a world with no problem. So what we can pray is, along with the disciples and the apostles, we can pray, come quickly, Lord Jesus, as you have promised. Come, Lord. That's the Maranatha. Come, Lord, come. Be with us, where we can be one with him. This is the greatest promise. This was the commission also given to us. We need to share this good news so that we all can be one with the Lord because this is the vision that God has. No one were designed to go to hell. We were designed to be with God and be one with him. With that, we will end this book of Revelation. Thank you so much, class, for joining with me. And it was a joy to journey together and study uh, the New Testament along with you that, um, you know, and I also pray and ask God that we, that he may reveal to each of us more of him, that in the coming days we may encounter him. So I'll just end this class with a word of prayer. Dear God, thank you for your grace, for your wisdom, for your understanding that you poured upon each of us, Lord. Thank you, Father, for the journey that we have journeyed together. I pray that this journey will continue, that you will take us deep into your word. You will reveal it to us, Lord, as our heart yearns and thirsts for more of you. I pray that, Lord, you will expand our heart. You will expand our wisdom, our understanding in knowing your word. Lord, I also pray that you will pour out your spirit on each of us that we may thirst, have that earnest thirst of knowing more of you, Lord, that we may not be content at the level where we are, but then we will grow in your word and experience more of you in depth, Lord. I pray that you pour out your spirit upon each of us that we may experience the tangible presence of God in our time, in our days, Lord. Thank you, Father, that you are continuing to minister to each of us and grow more and uh, help us to grow more in you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' most precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that you have helped me to journey with you and help me to understand and teach your word, Lord. Thank you for every opportunity, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Thank you everyone for joining together. I pray and I hope that the New Testament survey was a blessing to each one of you all. I will just share a feedback form on the stream. Request you all to please fill it up and share it with me. Thank you so much because um, your comments, your feedback will definitely help me to grow and uh, expand my skill sets in teaching. Thank you so much and God bless. God bless each of you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless.